one of these runners about to join a historic roll of honor here. The flag has gone up and they're off. Away they go for the Boodles Cheltenham Gold Cup of 2024. The real whacker going forward over on the inside. Followed by Fast or Slow and Jerry Colom and Long Presse all in the firing line. Quite a lot of pace on going to the first. And they're all safely over with Corat Rambler held up just about the back marker. And the real whacker not holding back over the first fence or two. The real whacker comes to the second now, jumps it well. Long Presse in second. Well, Nasalan made a mistake there. Long Presse in second. Galapin de Champ is third. Then the great gentleman's game. Followed by Brave Man's game towards the outside of Fast or Slow. And then Jerry Colom on the inside. Monkfish further back from Nasalam. And then Jungle Boogie, Korak Rambler looking on two lengths adrift. Into the back straight for the first time. And they're jumping 22 fences in this three and a quarter mile classic test. And it's the real whacker that leads the way from Lon Presse, Galapin de Champ in the brown and yellow quarter jacket, the defending champion. Jerry Colom is on the inside of Fast or Slow Blue with a red cap. The orange jacketed Brave Man's Game. Followed by Gentleman's Game out wide. Also out wide is Monkfish as they run on towards the water jump. And then towards the rear, Nasalam, who gave that plenty of air from Jungle Boogie. And finally, the Grand National winner, Corat Rambler. On towards an open ditch, the real whacker into it. Jumps it well, Long Presse fiddles over. Galapin de Champ wider. Followed by old rival, fast or slow. Then Jerry Colomb and Gentleman's Game towards the outside, none wider than Monkfish as they jump the next. And uh, at the back, Jungle Boogie and Corat Rambler preceded by Nasalam on the inside as they run left-handed now towards an open ditch. The real whacker from Long Presse. Jerry Colomb, Galapin de Champ, then fast or slow, and Nasalam and out wide is Gentleman's Game. Jungle Boogie behind these, Brave Man's Game. Uh, there was a slight mistake there from Monkfish, second last, and lastly, Corette Rambler. On towards the next, a plain fence. The real whacker, a winner here 12 months ago, comes in to take it, gets in a bit tight this time, not so fluent as they now run towards a left-hand turn. The real whacker, Long Presse, very handy in second. Galapin, Champ, Deschamps not far away. Then Jerry Colom on the inside of Fast or Slow and Gentleman's Game, Brave Man's Game, white, wide in the hands of Harry Cobden. Then Nasser Lamb and Jungle Boogie and Monkfish and finally Korat Rambler. Down the hill now towards the next plane fence before the turn into the home straight on this first circuit. And out in front, Sam Twiston Davis on the rear whacker has made it all so far from Long Presse. Galapin Deschamps on the outside as they leave the ground. Jerry Colomb right round the inside, followed through up the inside by Nasalam. Fast or slow is just in amongst them, getting plenty of cover in the hands of JJ Slevin. Then on the outside, Gentleman's Game. Wider still, Brave Man's Game. Followed by Jungle Boogie. The pace may have just slowed down a little. Out the back, Monkfish, and still weighted with in the hands of Derek Fox's Korak Rambler. Into the home straight, two fences, and then they'll go out and do it all again. And the real whacker by two lengths to Long Presse. Followed on the inside by Jerry Colomb. Wider out is Galapin Deschamps who jumped well there, uh, a slightly awkward jump from Gentleman's Game. Fast or slow in behind the front four or five. Then Jungle Boogie, Brave Man's Game, just urged forward a little bit, bit there by Harry Cobden to get a little bit closer jumping this one. Jungle Boogie behind these, then Monkfish and Korak Rambler. They're very well grouped together as they race in front of the stands. Galapin de Champ on the inside in third place as Long Presse draws level with the real whacker. Brave Man's Game has taken closer order into fourth, woken up by Cobden. Then on the inside, Jerry Colomb, followed by Fast or Slow, and Gentleman's Game, and Nasalam and Jungle Boogie, and then Monkfish second last, and finally Korak Rambler. Down the hill and on towards the next, on this final crucial circuit, the real whacker over from Long Presse and Galapin Deschamps. Then Brave Man's Game on the outside. Fast or slow, still with loads of cover, followed by Jerry Colomb and Gentleman's Game. Nasalam and Jungle Boogie, this is the water jump. The real whacker coming up first once again. Monkfish and Korat Rambler remain the last two. Now they gallop on to an open ditch. The real whacker joined by Long Presse. They take off together, the better jump from Long Presse. 
Galapin de Champ looks untroubled in third, then Brave Man's Game, followed by Fast or Slow and Jerry Colomb at the next plane fence. The real whacker, Long Presse Galapin, and down is the Fast or Slow has blundered and unseated JJ Slevin. A blunder there from Fast or Slow, who's out of the race, heading now towards six out. This is an open ditch. The real whacker from L'Ompresse. The real whacker one, L'Ompresse two. Then Jerry Colomb, Galapin Deschamps, Brave Man's Game, Gentleman's Game. Then Jungle Boogie from Monkfish, Korak Rambler, and Nassalam is toiling. On towards the next, another plain fence coming up. L'Ompresse right alongside the real whacker. Galapin Deschamps right there, poised to pounce under Paul Townend, followed by Brave Man's Game and Jerry Colomb. And then a couple of lengths of Gentleman's Game, Jungle Boogie, Monkfish, and Korak Rambler. Oh, now they approach the fourth last. L'Ompresse and the real whacker again in the air together from Galapin Deschamps. Brave Man's Game is behind these. Jerry Colomb written away from that fence. Jungle Boogie making some ground. And now they're running down towards the third loss. And L'Ompresse serving it up to the real whacker. But Galapin de Champs still moving ominously well. Then Brave Man's Game. There's a loose horse over three out. L'Ompresse led there under Charlie Deutsch. Here comes Paul Townend on Galapin de Champs into second place. Followed by Jerry Colomb on the inside. Just a little boxed in. The loose horse not helping. L'Ompresse is going to lead them in. In the Boodles Cheltenham Gold Cup. L'Ompresse by a length and a half. And the, the chasers are now at it. Galapin de Champ coming under pressure. Jerry Colomb. And then Jungle Boogie. Brave Man's Game and Korak Rambler staying on. As they now come down to the second last. Galapin de Champ rising just in front there from L'Ompresse. Then Jerry Colomb. Here's Korak Rambler into fourth place. The national winner, but Jack Galapin de Champ has struck for home again at Cheltenham and a massive jump over the last. He leads by four lengths to Jerry Colomb, then Korak Rambler, and racing up the hill is Galapin de Champ just avoiding the loose horse by three or, three or four lengths to Jerry Colomb. This is the champion, Galapin de Champ, coming up the Cheltenham Hill and backs up in the Gold Cup. Galapin de Champ. A dual Gold Cup winner from Jerry Colomb in second. Back in third, a bright run from Corrette Rambler staying on. L'Ompresse fading in fourth grade man's game and Jungle Boogie. Yes, this is the most important race and it's extraordinary to think that so many years this race has eluded and frustrated him and now he has got two dual winners of it, Album Photo and the very classic Galapin de Chon. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, he's, he is classy, isn't he? Um, like Paul just jumped out, rode a race on him. He, he was never afraid to have him up there and in the van, you know, just be at the races. We were just afraid about his uh, first first couple of jumps. The last few years he's come here, he's ballooned them a little bit. And this year, Paul said, no, we'll get him out there, get him racing earlier on, and then settle him in and ride a race. That's what he's done. And apart from the loose horse, there wasn't much worry was there? Well, I was going to yeah. say, but the loose horse was the issue, wasn't it? It, it was, but um, you know, you didn't know which way he was going to go, and I, I could see Paul thinking, I'd like to go his inside in case he runs off the track into the horse gate, into, into the stable yard gate, and he took a brave decision going uh, the other side, but um, it worked out in the end. Happy. And he was very brave over the last two fences, Paul was. He, he just sent him down to them and for one son, you better jump these two, you know. And you, the, the different tactics the last time, as you said, he ballooned a little bit early, he was in yeah. behind horses, but yeah. you changed the way he was ridden from the Savile's chase when he was so yeah. impressive. Uh, the right? Savile, no, no, I mean, this year we've been all forward with him. Yes, since we got the beaten, yes, Yeah, the since we got beaten in um, Pontchastan and the John Durkin. And Paul was keen that he just rode him like a racehorse. Yes. And I could see the other way wasn't working last year. I didn't want him up. I, he was just too free and he was less less mature. Now he's way more mature, settling in his races and much easier to ride, I think. And Paul has full confidence in, confidence in him. He has more confidence in him, I think, than I have. And I, I can see why he's obviously getting that sort of a feel from the saddle all along. And, um, you know, whereas I'm looking at visually and I'm thinking, is he doing too much when he's uh, getting into a battle too early? But I think he's just settled a lot. And he's the, the complete staying chaser now. He is, he is, and um, he gallops, he jumps. What more, you know, he stays, what more do you need, you know?
dreams now of a potentially a third Gold Cup for him emulating best mate? I imagine we have to do that, yeah. Of course you that's, do. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> the, and um, yeah, so I, I don't know. We, I'd normally come back to Pontchartrain with him. We'll see what uh, I'll have a word of the connections. And you know, racing good race horses deserve to run in good races, and and we need to see them out on, at the race track, and that's why I like running them. And, um, and getting them out. And if they're beaten, it's not the end of the world, you know. They're, they're, good. they're still good horses. That's Things happen in races. Yeah, that's been the great thing, I think, for race fans to have seen the Gold Cup winner three times before going into the Gold Cup. I mean, that, we didn't yeah. see Albon Photo so often, so it's been great to see a champion all yeah, season different long. Types, different before. types of horses, but, um, yeah, either horse I'm not afraid to race. And the biggest threat to him, maybe in the same yard, yours, back to file, potentially? Yeah, it'd be nice if they're both sound and, uh, you know, but in this game, we know the horses are fragile, especially going over fences. It's much harder to keep those chasers sounder. They just pick up little injuries. So, um, you know, it would be fantastic if, if both of them uh, make it to the Gold Cup next year. Well, you've produced him beautifully this year and all of your other horses as well. Many congratulations. Thank you very much, Lydia. Thank you. Thank you. How fitting in the 100th year of the Cheltenham Gold Cup to have such an excellent winner and an excellent rider on board, drawing equal with Pat Taff as the winning most jockey in the Cheltenham Gold Cup. Paul Townend on board, dual winner Galloping de Champ. How tremendously satisfying that must be. Yeah, to be honest, it, it feels different to all the other ones, to be honest. It, I, I can't really believe it. Um, I'm a bit lost for words. He's just he pulled out every stop. Like he went for, We went for reserves in the last part and that only the really, really good ones have, you know. And he had to be really brave, particularly to out. Exactly. The, he was brave the whole way around for me. Um, you know, the loose one was interfering with us a bit and it was uh, messy, but, like, what he found up the straight in the back of the last, you know, you see so many horses get to the last and, and don't get up the hill. He got up there last year, but it was a different type of ride. We'd conserved everything and we'd done it the hard way this year. And with the loose horse, that was the complication. Were you wanting, if you could, to get on the inside of him? I was wanting to do a lot of things, to be honest. Um, I was wanting him to stay straight was the most important thing. Um, yeah, you, you, I don't even remember my thought process in it, to be honest, because all you're doing is uh, reacting uh, in, in the split second. So uh, it's, it's kind of instinct and look. Well, and the horse as well. You oh, have to have a horse without, with that class. Without doubt. Um, I mean, the incident with the horse, you know, the loose horse. But, um, yeah, as I say, we we pulled out reserves there that only the very best have. Yeah, and is he the best that you've ridden? He's equal to Alban Foto now, anyway. <laughs> uh, you, you feel, I mean, they've done, they've done equal things. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Um, he's the most recent one, but Alban Foto is very good as well. This also strikes me as such a complete chaser, and we see him all season, you know, they're different types of horses. Yeah, I suppose with the way the programme has fallen at home now, uh, Willie supported it and it, it fell right for him, and um, he usually doesn't change things, but uh, he did it with this lad, and, you know, we changed up the way we ride him as well, and I suppose it's it's easier right, than when you're riding for Willie, you know, you, have to, you can go out and do things and change things, and, like, I'd gone out and it actually went plan A probably, but, you know, if it didn't, you have the free reign to change it up, and that's the privilege of riding for the, the great man. I don't know whether I'm projecting things onto you, but you seem more confident, more relaxed, happier, everything in this festival. I know everything has gone right, pretty much. but It has, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure people at home would have said that for the last fortnight, but, um, <laughs> no, I... I, I it's some very good horses to ride and, and they're very easy to, to ride good horses. And the prospect potentially of a horse that could challenge for best mate and win potentially three in a row. Potentially, potentially um, but we'll definitely enjoy this one first. Yeah, and presumably this, the whole meeting can have gone really, really well and if this one hadn't have happened, you'd have been feeling... Exactly, exactly. And look, El Fabiola hurt as well. Um, I was only saying, coming in here, the people with me today that Tuesday felt a long time ago and, and we didn't have a, had a winner on Wednesday. So uh, that's the, the magic of this place. But now, back at the Winners of Pleasure a couple of times and the Gold Cup, the big one. Many congratulations, Paul. Brilliant. Well done. Thank you, Mick. Thank you. Thank you. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com.